Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be doing a reaction today of Alan Becker's Animation versus Physics. Now, I did a reaction on Alan Becker's Animation versus Math, and that was a lot of fun. I am a business coach that has a background actually in engineering, which is all math and physics. And they've come out with a physics one, so that's right up my alley. I love it. I'm actually uh, more of a physics head than I am a math head. So I've never seen this video before. This will be the first time I've watched it. I intentionally didn't watch any of it. You've probably already watched it, so uh, you can laugh at me as I watch through it for the first time. And I'm going to give you some insights on the physics aspects of it. Uh, maybe you'll see something you didn't see before. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Space, fantastic. something kind of interesting so far one of the first things you learn in physics is the distance or the difference rather between speed and velocity so right now they just threw up a velocity equation uh, but it's important that they um, they denoted the distance there and direction so velocity always has direction speed doesn't necessarily have a direction notation so they're already doing themselves a favor they're already in, in, in my good graces in the way they're doing this physics video okay let's keep watching <laughs> So they quickly just introduced acceleration, which is simply the change in the delta of velocity. You guys already know that, though. So they just introduced the most famous equation in all of physics, and that's F equals MA. Force equals mass times acceleration. One thing I did notice just now is they said that that ball was one kilogram. That's about 2.2 pounds for my friends here in the United States. Um, if that would have fallen on his head from the height that it fell from, he would be dead 100% for sure, especially at the circumference of that little ball. So at least we know this little animation guy is highly resilient. I guess at the beginning he did fall from outer space onto this planet, so he's a pretty resilient fella. I take it back. He's good. So that little symbol that you saw that looked kind of like an M with an extra back, um, that is going to be resistance or um, uh, 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 friction, right? So this little planed area looks like ice to me. Um, they're saying that that friction level is 0.1, so that would be a tenth the friction level of, of standard ground, which would have the friction level of 1. So anyway, so now he's on a, a less frictious surface. <laughs> my first bit of negative feedback from Mr. Alan Becker here. So force is always going to equal out, 
right? So force in one direction, there has to be an equal and opposite reaction in the other direction, right? So this guy's got a ball and a string, and he's swinging the ball, and he's throwing it one direction, and that's moving him that direction. The reality is that if he had a ball like that and he threw it in that direction, if he's on a, a zero friction surface, he would actually move backwards because he threw it, and then when the ball hit the string, he would move forward again and be in the exact same spot. He wouldn't actually move. If he wanted to move on this zero friction plane here, he would just have to take the ball and throw it and let go, and then he would move backwards towards the friction surface, and the ball would move forward the other direction. So this actually did not follow the laws of physics just now. So first strike against you, Alan. Alrighty. <laughs>
branch there real quick. It just introduced torque. Uh, torque, um, actually, that is not torque. That's what's called a moment. Um, for most casual physics people, they're kind of interchangeable. But that's a force displayed out at a distance from a lever. So that branch is a lever, right? It's going to create sideways pressure is like a layman's way of saying it because it's force at a distance from center. So that was pretty good explaining that. So the force of gravity uh, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And as he was projected away from the planet, it was denoting that the force of gravity was going down to, to zero. Now, this is obviously hyper-realistic, right? Because he was still quite close to the planet, so the, it wouldn't be that low gravity-wise. But assuming he was so far away from space, that the pull of the planet's gravity was negligible. That's what they're trying to say here. So far away from the planet, the gravitational pull is so minute that it's as if he's floating. So it's saying it's gotten down to zero here. So now he's on a spaceship, good stuff. thing they did a good job of here um, it would be easy as an animator as he's riding on this spaceship with a cowboy hat to have his cowboy hat go up because of the wind but they're in space so there is no wind so they actually did a really good job at when he's looking forward looking backwards his hat is staying on that's probably why they introduced the hat at this point I don't know if it's gonna mean something later but they probably introduced the hat to, to reconfirm the fact that there's no air molecules in space so there's no air resistance so your hat wouldn't fly off even if you're on a ship going whatever however fast the ship is going so good job maybe I'll take away a strike Alan <laughs> So what they did there real quick is um, on the entire color spectrum, the color spectrum is a series of waves and the length of the wave has everything to do with what the color actually is. So we know the colors in the rainbow, right? Roy G. Biv. And then there's the ones on the other side, ultraviolet and infrared. Those all have to do with wavelengths and our eyes can only see a certain spectrum of wavelength um, until you get to ultraviolet or infrared. So it was just showing there that he has a flashlight that has different colors in it and a big physics property is learning about those wavelengths on the color spectrum. He also talked about the reflective nature of, um, of light and how that's always going to be normal to a surface. It is, uh, it is, uh, hitting and normal is another word for hitting a 90 going in one direction equal reaction so anyways colors yay <laughs>
gave him props about the hat before, and then I, I have to ungive him props again too. So um, we're in space. There's no atmosphere. So when he the, the, how he saved himself from impacting the star was that he flapped his hat so that he'd get higher elevation so he could actually use the, the star as a slingshot to get around it. But what do we know about space? There's no atmosphere. So flapping his hat downward, there's no, there's no atmosphere to actually resist against. So if he flaps his hat, he can flap it as much as he wants, but it's not going to make the rocket go up or down because there's no atmosphere. So for the same reason why his hat doesn't fall off his head, when he flaps it up and down, that's not going to affect the trajectory of the rocket whatsoever. Um, but let's pretend like that didn't happen and he just found a way to slingshot around this star. So that's fun. So it's introducing magnets here. Don't need to explain magnets too much. Most of us know what they are. I'm going to take a guess. See if we got these magnetic loops. I'm guessing he's going to go in these magnetic loops and it's going to start accelerating him and the rocket ship closer to the speed of light. And really, really fun things happen when you get closer to the speed of light, as we learned from Einstein. So I'm excited to see, see what they show here. So you probably couldn't, it was quick, but he took that small magnet and he magnetized the pole and then he took the pole and wrapped it around the, the ship. Um, and so essentially he made the ship itself an electromagnet, which once again, according to my prediction, is going to, is going to react to the magnet loops they're going to go through and accelerate them forward. Um, so he's made the whole ship a magnet now. So we just witnessed a lot of things. <clears throat> he's getting closer to the speed of light. Um, he's 80% of the way there. He's going towards this black hole. So we're going to learn about what happens here. Um, it mentioned a couple of things. One thing that I mentioned was the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is actually not um, Einsteinian. It's not <clears throat> part of Einstein's theory of relativity, um, which has everything to do with the extremes, getting things to the speed of light. The Doppler effect simply is that when you're going in one direction, the, the frequency or the, the waves that you hear from sound in the opposite direction is going to be different than the sounds ahead of you because of the wavelength, right? Because I'm moving through space, and the wavelengths are going to appear shorter in the direction that I'm moving because I'm moving that direction, and they're going to appear longer to my ears the ones behind me because I'm going in the opposite direction. That's what the Doppler effect is. It has nothing to do with Einsteinian physics, um, but they threw it in there because this is all about all kinds of physics, I guess. So uh, good to know.
certainly something's going to happen here with this black hole. They threw out a couple of notations there. First of all, an apple hit him in the head. That's obviously a nod to Isaac Newton, um, maybe the greatest physics mind of all time. Um, they mentioned the event horizon. The event horizon is that black outer crust there. Simply the event horizon is the, is the period in time, or I, rather in space, where the, the, the force in the black hole is so high that the light can't escape it. So that's why it's black around there. Not because there isn't light in there, but that light can't escape the gravity force and actually reach your eyeballs. So black holes are actually filled with light but they can't escape and actually reach our eyeballs. So that's what their event horizon is. Let's see what happens here. things here just notes right um, first of all when you get past the event horizon of a black hole the the force of gravity is so massively high that light can't even escape so I know we talked earlier about how our little animated friend here is quite resilient um, but he's got a rocket ship full of metal certainly the gravity would have crushed him and the rocket ship into uh, the size smaller than an atom by this point right, it would be completely condensed. So it wouldn't maintain its shape at all, okay? Now, secondly, <clears throat> he's got his flashlight. And you can see he's looking into the distance with his flashlight and he's going, oh, look at this thing, look at that thing, let me see, let me go that direction. But remember, we're past the event horizon in a black hole. So what would actually happen is his light from the flashlight would go out and he wouldn't be able to see anything any light that is reflected on that and the light that's emitted by the flashlight because the force of gravity is greater past the event horizon than the um, than the speed of light so what would actually happen is the light the flashlight would admit light it would go out and it would be sucked into the black hole and I wouldn't be able to see any of the of the flashlights light because the speed of light back to my eyes to be able to actually see it is not greater than the force of gravity. So the flashlight would be complete. I mean, obviously they'd all be crushed into a tiny, tiny speck. But with that not happening, even the light of the flashlight, he wouldn't be able to see any of that. So anyway, but he's got an apple. Let's see what he does. So now it seems like he has been crushed down into small size. Prior to that, you saw this kind of stretching and elongating effect. That's Einsteinian. And so when you get, the closer you get to the speed of light, the, the longer you actually stretch matter. Okay, so it's a stretching effect. There's several other things that happen <clears throat> in tandem to that, um, but length approaches infinity, the closer you get to the speed of light as well as mass approaches infinity as well. So I wonder if they're going to mention mass here, but that's that stretching effect has everything to do with the speed that they're going. Um, and also, yeah, I guess there would be an effect on the pull, right? Because the closer you are to the center of the black hole, the force will be higher at one end than it is the other. So that's going to create a stretching effect as well. So it could be that as well as the speed. So both, both things. Anyways, let's keep going. So 
so he has been crushed down to very, very small size due to gravity <clears throat> of the black hole, that force. And we just went through basically <laughs> all the way from uh, macular level down to the microscopic. We got past the protons and neutrons and quarks. Quarks are the smaller parts that uh, build protons and neutrons and electrons. And now we're going to land somewhere else. Let's see where we're at. <laughs> So I think it's very important to note most of what we've we've talked about, you know, Newtonian physics, Einsteinian physics, um, all of that so far has been has been um, <clears throat> um, non-theoretical, meaning like these are proven facts of of physics, right? Um, now we've entered the singularity, which simply means the middle point of a black hole. <clears throat> All of this is theoretical physics, right? So none of this is proven. None of this can be proven. Um, these are all completely um, guesstimations by, by physicists, right? So the singularity is what happens when you go to the, the center of a black hole. There's a ton of theories around this. One of the theories is the multiverse theory. I do not subscribe to that theory, um, but it's a, it's a theory where at the center of a black hole, um, that's where the multiverse is created. So he's seeing another version of himself, right? So that's kind of the marvelized version of what a multiverse actually is. And so, right, I, I'd say, yeah, going back maybe a minute or two, everything from this point forward is completely theorized um, with really no scientific backing behind it. It's all theory. So what we look at here on what alternate dimensions look like and what the singularity looked like and all that kind of stuff, not backed by science. Um, but it is fun to, to look into the theoretics of it and uh, see what the possibilities could be. So let's. Uh, so I'm not going to be much good when it comes to commentary on the rest of this, assuming that they are working in this multidimensional singularity um, forum here, uh, because once again, it's all theory. I can give you my theories on it, but who cares? <laughs> so, anyways, let's see what happens. Thank you. 
Alrighty. <clears throat> very good, Alan Becker. So at the end there, um, they're manipulating string theory, right? Once again, very theoretical physics. Um, so they're manipulating th string th theory to, uh, I guess, estimate what it would be like to be able to manipulate space and time um, and, and, and at the singularity, apparently you're able to able to do that because space and time is just a consequence of Einsteinian physics after all. Um, so he's able to go back in time, forward in time, manipulate space, things like that. So <clears throat> string theory, very advanced stuff, um, very theoretical, uh, but fun, fun to learn about. So it was kind of cool that this video went from very basic physics <clears throat> all the way through what the most advanced theoretical uh, physics are basically of, uh, of our our, our modern age. I believe string, string theory was developed by Hawkins, but I'm not 100% on that, so fun stuff. Anyways, appreciate you sticking uh, with me to the end of the video and getting my take on the physics. Um, couple of, couple of uh, demerits, I guess, for Alan Becker, getting a couple of the, I guess, Newtonian physics wrong, but you have to create a narrative in the story somehow, so I, I'll give you some grace there. So um, if you want to watch more reactions like this, go ahead and uh, click on this reaction I did on uh, animation versus math. And if you want to learn more about brain puzzles and things like that, uh, I have a whole series on that on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe, and uh, you can look through those uh, brain puzzles and riddles and things like that. All right, thanks for joining me, and thanks for sticking to the end of the video. Have a good day.